All right, guys, let's start. It's been a while that I've been thinking about recording a video about solving a Ken Ken puzzle. And for those who are not familiar with the Ken Ken puzzle, its basic idea is inherited from Sudoku. And no doubt, Sudoku is a very exciting puzzle to solve. And of course, as it becomes harder and harder, the more exciting it is and less boring it is to solve. But you know what? After a while, you start to get that feeling that it's kind of a just a rigmarole. It's just the same routine steps, same tricks that you have learned over time. And there are many theorems. I mean, I like to call them theorems. Of course, they're not official theorems. But you have got your own tricks of trade while solving Sudoku. But after a while, it becomes boring, no matter how hard a Sudoku puzzle is. So many years ago, this puzzle Can Can was designed. I don't exactly know the historical details. Uh, however, it's, it's, it's inspired by Sudoku. And there are different sizes of this Ken Ken puzzle. I mean, it starts with as simple as a three cross three puzzle and then five cross five, so on and so forth. And uh, this is a nine cross nine Ken Ken. Anything less than nine cross nine also gets boring with time. But somehow within this nine cross nine puzzle, there are so many degrees of freedom. And no matter how how big a champion you are of the Ken Ken puzzle. And yes, people vary in terms of their prowess with which they can solve a Ken Ken puzzle. Seems like every new puzzle is a fresh puzzle and every new puzzle makes you think hard. And you, you still have to be on your toes. Now, this is a personal perspective. I've been playing Ken Ken for a while, so maybe you can say I'm not... Now, I'm not in that league yet to just consider even a 9 cross 9 hard puzzle as boring. But my claim is that, or my first person perspective is that there are so many degrees of freedom that every new puzzle would appear to bring along certain challenges. Sometimes a leap of logic, breathtaking leaps of logic that you, that you experience uh, having solved innumerable number of Ken Ken puzzles, I still sometimes get that feeling that, oh, this puzzle is, has allowed me to experience something brand new. Okay, so with this preface, I think it's been a while that I've been just talking and talking and talking. So I just want to define what a Ken Ken puzzle is. So this is a 9 cross 9 grid. Just like Sudoku, the constraint is that in every row you need to have digits from 1 to 9 in every column you need to have digits from 1 to 9 well then you have got these bold lines inside and these bold encased regions sometimes referred to as cages they can be of arbitrary shapes of course in a rectangular grid and at the top of each cage you would see a number written and along with you would see an arithmetic sign or an operation and the deal is that the numbers that get into this cage when they go through this operation the answer is what is written in the top left of this cage for instance, this is super easy. So what this cage spells out is this, that there are two numbers which when multiplied will give a result of 56. So this is straightforward. We do not know the order, but we know that the numbers are going to be 7 and 8. Okay, there is no other way. Similarly, if you look at this cage, this is also pretty simple. Two numbers from 1 to 9, which when multiplied, produce an outcome of 54. We know this is going to be 6 cross 9. 
two numbers when divided give a result of two two numbers when divided give a result of three and of course you might be able to guess what those numbers are maybe you might be able to come up with multiple candidates but figuring out the order would might will it would, would require a little bit of more logic or maybe more steps so just have to be patient so that's the deal so now I'm just going to solve this puzzle I'm, I have no idea what's going to transpire and that's the that's the interesting part of solving a can can puzzle so I'll start with the most easy part I've I already spotted those easy uh, spots uh, and easy cages while talking to you so of course I'll start with this cage that I know that here goes either a 7 or 8 I'll just write 7 slash 8 I just noted this is 72 so I'll just write 8 cross 9 I don't know the order we'll figure that out this is 6 cross 9 what else can I see Well, this is 7, this is straightforward, so it has to be 1 cross 7. Wait a minute, one, 1 or 7, but wait a minute, I just realized that we have got a 7 or 8 here, so this means that 7 cannot come in this column, because no matter what the order is, 7 has to come in either one of these cells. So a 7 does cannot come here, so I've already reasoned myself into putting a 1 over here and a 7 over here okay so this was easy I'm noticing one thing and I like you to know that I'm just parking this fact in my mind I just noticed that so so obviously because the numbers are from 1 to 10 like 1 to 9 so there's no 10 in it so any number that ends in a 0 it, it requires a factor of 10 but there is no 10 in the first nine digits so the only way to generate a 10 is to have a 5 so a 5 has to come in this cell in this cage such that the outcome is 90 and 5 times 18 is 90 I, I do not know whether it's like 2, two times 9 or 3 times 6 I do not know at the same point in time, I also notice that there is a zero over here. So a five must come also must must be accommodated within these uh, cells as well. As a consequence, I know that in these two rows, if a five has to come, that five has to be accommodated here or here. So f which means that five cannot come here. And as a consequence, you should just reason at the back of your head that if you were looking for two numbers that would generate an 11 when added to one another 5 and 6 cannot be those numbers because 5 cannot come here because of this reason so you can eliminate 5 you can eliminate 6 of course and you can think of other numbers of course I do not know whether it's going to be 2 plus 9 3 plus 8 4 plus 7 but 5 plus 6 I know this cannot 5 or 6 cannot come here just I mean I mean of course, if you want to make notes of these things feel feel free but sometimes you just have to park those things at the back of your mind so now while reasoning I just realized that this is too big of a number 320 and I might be able to find some uh, unique factors because the bigger the number I mean of course you've got numbers from 1 to 9 and it just has more likelihood to ha to have a unique factorization from in numbers from one to nine as compared to a smaller number where you might have multiple candidates just like we saw that it's five is supposed to come here but whether it's going to be two times nine three times six only time will tell what about 320 I do not know so I just want to quickly see what happens so I know a five has to come for sure so 320 upon 5, what is this? This is 64. 
Oh man, this was so easy. So the rest is 64. And these are three numbers in which one of them is five. The other two numbers, when multiplied, give 64, two numbers. So those two numbers have to be eight. Each of them has to be eight. And we know the exact location as well. Because if you have got an L-shaped cage like this and two numbers have to be repeated, the only way is to put those two eights over here and here. It looks like a G. Okay. And five, of course, goes here. That's interesting. You know what? I just noticed one thing. I just noticed that this strange kind of an inverted T uh, cage must give an outcome of 45, which means it also requires a factor of 5. Now, 5 cannot come here. I'm just going to make a note over here that in this cage, 5 can either come here or here. 5 has to come here, which means that 5 cannot come anywhere here, which means that you cannot have 5 plus 8 over here. So I'll just park that over here. Then secondly, because I know that the 5 also has to come here because of this 90, I'll just make sure that I put this mark over here. Just to remember that 5 is going is expected to come somewhere here. Okay. This is now becoming tricky. Of course, it's, it's, it's a hard puzzle. It is, it is categorized as hard. Uh, there are two main websites that have got free CAD CAD puzzles. I don't remember which website I downloaded it from, but it was categorized as a hard puzzle. Nine cross nine, hard puzzle. <clears throat> so, now, the thing is that this looks very, very dubious and a candidate of some some potential reasoning so these are four numbers in this cell four numbers when multiplied will give us a result of 45 one of them is five which means the rest of the three numbers would would multiply to give nine now there are two ways to generate nine. One option is that maybe those three numbers are one cross one cross nine, like two, two ones and one nine. If two ones have to come within this cage, one of them has to come here and one of them in this row and one of them has to come in this row. That cannot happen. That is not possible. Because one has already come here. So therefore, the other possibility, I have, we, we, we have to think of the other possibility. What's the other possibility? So one cross one cross nine is not, is not going to make it. What's the other possibility of three numbers when multiplied, giving the result of nine? Three cross three cross one. Hmm. Which means what? that one of the threes has to come here. Oh man, one of the threes has to come here, right? So if you just reasoned ourselves into believing that this cell has to be three, and then the other three cannot come here. The other three must come can come here or here so I'm going to just write it like this 5 slash 3 5 slash 3 and what is left is 1 interesting this was interesting logic I think you're getting a flavor of what kind of reasoning it might take to figure out efficiently the potential candidates uh, for a particular cell and actually deciding for sure that, okay, one and three must come here. I'm noticing something, actually. 
I just noticed a nine has come here, and there are three. Uh, there are two cells, which actually I just noticed another thing. But but I'll just finish what I started off uh, saying. So you know what? There are two. Th there are just three possibilities of this of two numbers w when divided and producing a three. Of course, because the numbers are between one and nine, either it's going to be one or three. When three divided by one is three, or it could be three and nine, which nine divided by three is three, or it could be two and six. But nine cannot come here, so these four cells have to be filled in by one and three and two and six. This is clear to me. Now, one thing that I notice that the one three cannot come here because one cannot come here or here because of these two ones. So therefore, I'm just reasoning that one and three must come here. And therefore, two and six must come here. Okay. Now, Let's see. So this is now super tricky. Okay, we will see. So I'm just now a little bit confused where to go next now so when it comes to seven first of all had it been eight like like think of two numbers which once subtra once subtracted will give you the answer of eight that can only happen with one and one and nine but this seven a difference of seven can be either one eight or two nine I'm just going to write 1 8 slash 2 9 1 8 sorry 1 8 slash 2 9 okay oh this is interesting so again based on our knowledge that there are only three possibilities whenever we have got a three as a result with the division operation but just notice this both six and nine have already been consumed so the only possibility left is one three because two six can't can't make it and three nine can make can't make it so one and three this is interesting So, most of the time it also helps to just write numbers from 1 to 9 and just eliminate some of the numbers that have already been used. I'm looking at this column. So, oh, I just noticed something. Look what happened. Because of this 1 and 3, and you know this 5 or 3 were the options over here? So, as a consequence, we know that we know the exact order now. So, 3 can't come here, so therefore 5 must come here, and 3 must come here. Okay, so now 1 and 3 six and nine and five can also be eliminated now what are we left with for this thing interesting only two and seven and because seven is already here so i'll just do two and seven interesting so two and seven also go so we are left with four and eight 
interesting. Four and eight. Now, if we had a four over here, then either we had to put a three over here or a five over here. Both cannot come here. So, I'm just going to undo this because I already know that this is going to be eight. Now, of course, that I can't comment much for now. It's going to be seven or nine. But here, I know that... I have a four so with a four over here Wow with a four over here so you can either have a two or an eight eight can't come here so we have a two here okay now now this is I don't know so let's let's write this column now I mean it's 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 not required to write but like I think it's going to be more clear so a 2 goes 5 goes 8 goes there is a 3 there is a 1 so we are left with 4 6 7 9 is it the case that I, mean, I think we can just exhaust it to see when 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 can we get a 17 it's obvious that if we get rid of 9 4 6 7 is 17 okay but if we get rid of 4 no 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 chance if you get rid of 6 11 and 9 and 20 no chance if you get rid of 7 this the result is 19 so the only way is to use a 4 6 and 7 so just do it like this, four, six, seven, four, six, seven, and you can get rid of this seven slash nine, and you know that this is nine. Not bad. So, so far, I would reckon this to be an interesting puzzle. It's not super hard, but I'll just say that it's not been smooth as well. Uh, I've seen smoother puzzles as well. It's it's making me feel like it's making me feel the heat a little bit. So I'll be honest. Uh, it's we, we we are just like we have been working our way through the puzzle, and I think there's a long way to go, and I just do not know what's the next step. I'm just trying to figure out okay so I just noticed something I just noticed something so in this row this with, with this 3 2 over here where can 5 come 5 cannot come here because with the difference of 5 you need 10 so that's not a possibility 16 that's not possible with a 5 so we kind of know that a 5 must come here or here. And that gives us a sense about this L-shaped cage as well because the rest of the two numbers must sum up to 10 to get a result of 15. Okay. Well, here you can either get 4, 9 or 6, 7. I'm just going to write it. It's not helping us, but I'm just going to write it. Here as well, I know it's going to be either 3, 8, or 4, 6. But I don't know whether it's going to help us or not, so I'm not going to write. Okay, so... Ooh! Oh man, I noticed something very strange, very, very strange. Now this is interesting. In this column, where can 5 come? 5 has got nothing to do with this. Okay, 2 divided by just, you know that. 5 has got nothing to do with this. 
So if 5 can come over here or over here, but I noticed something. If 5 had to come over here, you would have to put 2 over here, which is not a possibility. Or an 8 over here, which is also not a possibility. So we can just be sure that 5 has to come here, which means that we also know that this is 5 or 6. This was good. Actually, this was good. I like it. Now, this is becoming interesting. So I'm just going to write what, what has been filled in with this, this column. Five and six are gone. Eight is gone. A three has been eliminated. Now, the candidates for this difference of five. Ooh. So either it is two seven or four nine. We can't say much as of now. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we can say, you know what? In this row, two and se both two or seven cannot come. And actually, I noticed that this is oh well because of this two, we could have at least figured it out. But that happens. So sometimes, actually most of the times, unexpected things happen. Two and six. Okay, so we were in the middle of an argument, and that argument was this because here we can either have two, seven, and four, nine. Now, two, seven cannot come here because this cell cannot accommodate. 2R7, so it has to be 4, 9. So I'll just put a 4 and 9 over here. That's interesting. That's good. So I'll just eliminate 4 and 9 as well. Now this is interesting. What we are left with in this column is 1, 2, and 7. And I think you should know that I know for sure that I'll get a 7 over here. Why? Because I know that in order to get a 2 over here, I need the only thing that can fit the bill is 1 and 2. So I also know four, that a 4 has to come here. This is interesting. Seems like things are falling into place, but still these are early times in this puzzle. Hmm. Hmm. I was thinking about something. In this row, where can 9 come? So 9 cannot come here. 9 can come here. But can 9 come here? Yes, because 5 and 9 would make it 14 and a 1 can come here. But if for some reason 9 would have, it would have just disqualified to be a candidate for this, we could just make sure that, okay, 9 can come here. But right now, it's too early. It's too early. However, things are filling in in the last two rows. So I would like to do a checkpoint for the last row. Let's see if we can get some clues. So 4 is gone, 7 is gone, 8 and 9 are gone. Well, oh, lots of candidates. Like Either it could be 1, 2, 2, 3, 5, 6, lots of candidates. And similarly, 1, 2, and 3, 6. So that's actually not good. Hmm. So that wasn't much fruitful. What about this thing? I think even for the second last row as well, there is not much that can be said. But I'll just do it. One, two, three can be eliminated and five can be eliminated. What about a difference of two? Yeah, there, is, there are more than one candidates for that. So that doesn't help either. Now, 
here I just noticed that for this particular cell, I mean, one cannot come here, two cannot come here. Okay, four can come here, and eight can come here. So I'll just put a four and an eight. Now, if we have a four over here, then this is very interesting. I have no idea whether this logic is going to fly, but if that's the case, I'm just going to reconfirm if this is correct or not. If or Is this reasoning sound that the only two numbers that can come over here are 4 or 8? Because the, the output is supposed to be 16. Yes, I think so. Now, if there was a 4 over here, that means that this row should multiply, to, we should have two numbers that should produce a 4. And there's only one way to do that. And that is like a 4 comes here and 1 comes here. Okay, just park that park that fact in at, at the back of your mind that a 1 comes here. Now, if an 8 is here, then the only way we can have this cage to be equal to 16 when multiplied, uh, we need a 1 and a 2. And again, one cannot come here, so one has to come here. So, whatever comes over here, one we need a one over here. And I think that was correct. And therefore, we also know, I know you have noticed this, that we can fix the order here. But let's finish the logic over here. So if the four comes here, then we know that a four has to come here. If an eight comes over here, we know that a 2 has to come over here. Maybe that's going to help us in the future. So now I am just going to get rid of these things. So that gives us a 3 and a 1 over here. Okay. Can we say something about this 11? Is it like 2 and 9? 4 and 7? Yeah. Never mind. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't know if it's going to help us, but I'm just going to write that this is going to be the five or nine and maybe a six and an eight. Six and an eight, right? Because if if fourteen is going to be the outcome of six and eight, it has to be in this order because of this eight. If fourteen is going to be the outcome of a five and nine, it has to be in this order because of a five over here. Now you see unexpected discovery, unexpected discovery. So therefore, it's very important to make your notes. So this is I th this is something that I discovered while. Uh, playing Sudoku in my Sudoku days and I called it the sharing theorem and I'm just for complete transparency I am just going to discuss the sharing theorem I think sharing theorem is a powerful theorem in Sudoku and oftentimes it also is very very helpful in uh, in can, can as well so the theorem goes like this so six and nine have to come here nine or six whatever and a 6 and 9 also have to come here, which means these two cells share 6 and 9. 
they are the sole owners of six and nine six and nine cannot feature over here because if six comes here a nine has to come here if a nine comes here a six has to come here six and nine can never come anywhere else so this i refer to as the sharing theorem or the ownership theorem uh, and sometimes it helps us to figure out what's going on so now I think now as a consequence we have a solid reasoning in favor of a 4 and 7 making up this 11 a 4 and 7 making up this 11 that's interesting that's a 4 and 7 making up this 11 that's one hell of a road to heaven that's one hell of a road to heaven okay so for 11 we had candidates 2 and 9 that doesn't work 3 and 8 that doesn't work 4 and 7 that does work 5 and 6 doesn't work because of this 5 so 4 and 7 I'm going to argue for 7 cannot come here 4 can come here 7 can come here you see I think I think we are very close to I'm a little bit very so so 4 and 2 uh, were the candidates so therefore I know that a two has to come here and as a consequence I also know something about this cell as well it has to be an eight I'll just finish my thought what I was about to say so I was tempted to say that we are very close to the avalanche stage or the domino effect that once you are beyond a critical point things just fall into place but I am a little bit hesitant to declare that situation as of now because still there's a long way to go but I noticed something that only two digits are left in this column so what are two those two digits one two three four five is not here six seven eight and nine so five and seven okay I guess that we just have to write them over here or maybe some clever person is going to figure out so four slash two right five plus four two plus seven five it's going to be either one or nine one cannot come here it's like a nine or a three okay well i have now i'm now just having an interesting revelation that will at least take care of this row I could be wrong but let me just try to finish my line of thought so here here we can either have a 4 or a 9 if we have a 9 over here then it's 14 9 plus 5 is 14 we need a 1 over here that's not a possibility so I'm just concluding in favor of 5 and 4 over here that's the only choice 9 and we need a 6 over here you see something is about to happen but I am still not going to declare victory so 4 and 9 were there so therefore we have a 9 over here and we have a 4 over here I think there are lots of things that I'm noticing now but let's go slow so what is left in this row one two three four five is here six seven eight nine so we know that it's five slash nine interesting which also means that we have a two over here that's good so but this six is of course helping us because we know that it's nine over here because of this six so I'm just going to erase this part so 
We have a nine over here. That is helping us with this six as well. We know what's going to happen here. So it's nine plus five. Ooh, that's interesting because maybe that's... Sometimes there are punctuated episodes of avalanche, just like we have got punctuated equilibrium uh, in evolution. So this is nine plus five. That's very interesting because I'm seeing something else because of this five we decide we need we have a decision about these five because of this five we know five and seven so let's 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 try to this there's a lot of work we know what to do next so but still it's not done yet so and sometimes these are moments when you're very excited that you commit a small error and you don't notice and when you realize it's too late okay six nine that is done what about i think we can be we know that it's going to be four and five first four and then a five so which means that we have got a four over here and a five over here well that let's make it nine and five it's so obvious so uh... hmm Okay, so we know that this seven, a seven has to come here, therefore a two has to come here, therefore a five has to come here, therefore a nine has to come here, therefore a six has to come here and a five has to come here. That's interesting. So, so there's a lot of work to do. So I'm just going to, I, I know that there is a seven that is come, that is going to come here. And a two that's going to come here. So. So I'm just going to put a 2 over here and a 7 over here. Therefore a 5 is supposed to come here and a 9 is supposed to come here. I'm actually getting tired but I just want to finish this in one sitting. So this is a 5 and this is a nine and therefore we've got a six over here and a five over here so any predictions are we close to the singularity or the avalanche or the critical point of the domino effect are we anywhere close to that or not any ideas I have no idea okay what about this 11 the too many 11s so 2 9 is gone, not going to make it 3 8 is a candidate 4 7 is not going to make it 5 6 is not going, going to make it so it's like a 3 8 now I notice an 8, 8, 8 cannot come here so therefore I also know the order so it's like a three and an eight. That's interesting. That's interesting. However, I just noticed something. Because here we can we need to have either a three eight or a four six. Now it's it cannot be three eight because it cannot come here, it cannot come here, so it has to be four six. That's interesting. And that solves that at least oh because a four is here so I know that we need to have a six over here that's interesting maybe we've got some repercussions for this uh, as well but I'm seeing something else four and six cannot come here so we know that this has to be a seven so I 
and I'm going to erase 7 from here, 7 from here. So, therefore, I'm going to write a 7 here. Hmm, 1, 8, and 2, 9. Hmm, that's funny that we still cannot eliminate this. Hmm. A four cannot come here, a six cannot come here. A seven cannot come here. Oh, six and seven both cannot come here. So therefore, therefore this has to be a four, nine, and therefore the order is going to be a nine, four because of this four. That's interesting. You see, you see there was this inkling that maybe because this column was filling in, it must have some implications on what comes downstairs over here. So we have got a nine over here and a four over here. And I've got a feeling, oh, I don't have a feeling. We know for sure that this column is complete. There's only one digit left. One, two, three, four. Where is a five? There's no five over here. What about the rest? Six, seven, eight, nine. So we know that a five has to come here. Interestingly, four cannot come here with a five, a six has to come here. Therefore, this column is also complete. What is left? One, two. Is there a three? No three. Is there a five? No five. So three and five must come here. In what order? We know because of this five. Because of this five. We know it's a three over here and a five over here. Now that's good. That's really good because that decides this one and three. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. I'm getting some positive vibes now. So this is a one over here and a three over here. Well, even now, even now I cannot finish this. <sighs> Something is wrong. Hmm. Okay. Okay. No problem. What about this? This is either two and six or three and four. I'm talking about this cell or the, this cage. The, the, the outcome has to be 12 and two numbers are multiplied. That can happen only in two cases, two and six, three and four. Two and six cannot happen cannot come here because of this. Two. Oh, well, we did not need any reasoning because there's only one digit left over here and that is three. Sometimes you are over reasoning. So therefore, four has to come here. Therefore, a six has to come here. Maybe something is finally happening. Something is finally happening, maybe. So what comes here? Y you see what was wrong? I was not looking at this 2 and 7 and then reasoning, eliminating a 2 over here. That was something that was really wrong. That That's why I was so taken aback with, with so much crowded area still we are not able to eliminate Oof, that's not possible either way we'll go so because of this four we now know that this six has to come here this seven has to come here and oh sorry sorry wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute you see so there was a problem this four has to come four has to come here so now because of this two we we know that this one has to come here, and two has to come here, and therefore we have finally good news for that notorious and infamous cage. I am talking about this cage because of this two, because of this two, two and nine cannot come, so it has to be one and eight, and therefore we also know a nine has to come here. So Still, we do not know the order of 1 and 8, but I still want to make sure 
that I just put stuff I just clean clean it up so I know it's going to be 1 and 8 1 and 8 and a 9 over here and an 8 over here and therefore a 7 and 8 that's that order is also now you see this was the first thing that we did seven and eight that's where we started off that's something that i talked about in the intro as well but you see it has taken us such a long journey and one has to be patient to figure out this order it has taken us so long to figure this out okay now i am seeing something and that something is this because of this two two six cannot come here so it has to feature a three either a one three or a three nine that three can three three cannot come here because of this three so therefore this has to be three one slash nine we have a one over here so therefore this has to be nine i think the first two rows are also filling in so i just see something uh I just see no 7 over here. 7 cannot come here because you cannot get a 7 after dividing something by 2. So 7 has to come here. This can either be 6 or 8. It cannot be 8 because of this 8. So we'll just put a 6 over here. What is missing in this row? 1, 2. I do not, do not see. So I'll just put 2 over here. Sometimes it's good to check that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If all digits are there, that means that no, nobody's repeating. 2. Now, either a 1 or a 4. Tell me. 1 or a 4. I see a 4 here. So, therefore, 1. And therefore, we know the order of 1 and 8 over here. It took a while to figure out whether it's going to be 1, 8, or 2, 9. But after that, it didn't take to, take that long to figure out the order. So I think now we are getting very, very close. So I think at this time I can say that we are nearing the solution. Actually, this is just this part that is left. So what do you say? I see a 7 that is missing, I see a 3 that is missing, so it has to be 3 and 7. In what order? I know that. So it has to be 3 over here and a 7 over here. And the difference is 4. Last few stages are basically a sanity check big time because we know what to put here. And then if the answer is correct, you know that you have been following the right logic. So what is left over here? One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Very nice. The difference is two. But in what order? Because I see an eight over here, so therefore I'm going to put a six over here and an eight over here. Very nice. Very nice. Now there are many ways to figure out what's going to come over here. I see a one and two missing. Nice. One and two. It should be in what order? I see a 1 here, so therefore I'm going to put a 2 here and a 1 here. And we have solved this puzzle. So whatever your, your initials are, your autograph or whatever, we just put it here and sign it. And we are done with this puzzle. So this was my first video solving a CanCan -can puzzle. I've been thinking about doing this for a very, very long time. I am tired, uh, but it was fun. So maybe in the future, I will record more Can Can videos. For now, it's time to just relax and look at this puzzle for 17 more minutes and just imagine what has happened.